Hey everyone, this is Chris from CTI Music Ministries and I've got some tips for you on using Roland's editor software to do custom programming for the Roland Juno DI synth. And hey, if you're a musician looking for an opportunity to use your gifts to help share the gospel around the world, uh, check out join.ctimusic.org. As you see in front of you here, learn everything you need to know about joining one of our bands. Alright, let's get started. All right, if you don't already have Roland's editor software, just Google Roland Juno DI editor software download. You'll see uh, Roland's support page. If you click on that, there are a lot of things available here, drivers and such. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of that list, you will find Juno DI editor librarian here for Mac OS. And if you scroll up, you will also see it for Windows. All of my demos are done on Windows. I don't have experience with the Mac software. I am just assuming that it works either the same way or similarly. All right, once you have the software installed, you just need to connect your Juno to the computer with a USB cable and then go ahead and launch the software. Now the first time you launch the software, you may be presented with an error saying that the computer cannot find the keyboard as displayed here. So if you ever get this unable to read write data error, go ahead and clear it, come up here to setup, and go to setup MIDI devices. And you'll see probably, uh, you see how it says Juno unconnected for both the input and the output? If you select that, you should also see an option that just says Juno without the unconnected. Just switch it over to that and then you're good to go. Now once you are successfully talking with your Juno, hit the read button and it will gather all of the data from your keyboard and make the editor software represent the same state that your keyboard is in. If you don't have the connection error, this will happen the first time you launch the software. So now we're seeing an exact representation of what is happening on the keyboard. Okay, notice this row of buttons right across the top, read, sync, write, and keyboard. So when editor is first launched, it will read the status of the attached Juno and it'll display the parameters of the current selected patch or perform in the main editor window. I'll talk about those in a second. After this initial read, the Juno and the editor should each reflect the changes that are made on each other in real time as long as they're connected. So if you change the patch that's assigned to a particular part, um, that's going to change immediately uh, on the Juno. So if you press the read button, that's going to load into editor whatever is currently on the Juno. Uh, so if you want to load a different perform on the Juno and then change it using editor, you'll press that. Um, you'll just go to the Juno, you'll call up the perform that you want to edit, and then press the read button uh, to load that into the computer editor. Uh, conversely, if you press the write button, that's going to prompt you to save the current status of editor to a memory location on the Juno. I'll show you. If I click write, it pulls up a list of all the performs that I have on the Juno, which is full at the moment, and I can select one and overwrite it if I wanted to do that. And then keyboard will just bring up an on-screen keyboard that you can play if that's useful to you. I've never found it useful. Let me just briefly highlight the difference between a patch and a perform if you don't already know them. Uh, a patch, which I'll click this button here, a patch refers to a single voice or sound within the instrument. So anytime you hit any of the first uh, nine buttons, zero through eight, on the keyboard, you're accessing a patch. The last button says perform, that's what we're looking at here, and a perform refers to a collection of multiple patches that can be played together. So if right on the face of the keyboard you've used the split feature or the dual feature, you know how you've created a perform by doing that, and you, if you go to save that, you'll save it in the perform bank. So here in editor, you can look at just a patch or you can look at a perform. I never look at just a patch. I'm only ever using editor when I want to make a complex perform. So in the initial window that popped up when we opened editor, you see a mixer. You see these uh, 16 sliders plus a master slider. 
Each of those corresponds to one of 16 parts. Here are the part buttons up here at the top. Uh, those 16, you can have up to 16 parts in a perform, and each part uses a single patch. So if I click on part one here, you can see I'm using the patch Bustranza. I don't even know what that is, but I'm using it. Uh, and part two, I'm part two. I'm using this uh, this clavy. Part three, a particular synth, a saw. So um, all sorts of synths throughout this. Uh, version of this is amazing grace I can control the volume of each part down here uh, and there's a couple of other things I can do on this screen but they're more easily done somewhere else I want to tell you a little more about these parts though if I want to change what uh, patch is assigned to a part um, I can do that here by clicking the patch list button so if I wanted to replace Bustranza with something else uh, I click that and it opens this window uh, and I could say, well, let's say if I wanted to replace it with a piano patch instead, I'd go to patch category, I'd pull up the pianos, and here's all the pianos that are in the Juno. And I could just say, let's make it this FMEP. And I click that, uh, and then I close it, and look, now part number one, you can see down here, you can see up here, is this FMEP mix. Um, and you can do that throughout all of these different parts. So now I've made a change and let's say I want to save this. There's two fit places that I can save it. First of all, I probably want to save it to my computer so that uh, I can share it with other people or if it gets, uh, you know, I drop my Juno off a cliff or whatever. Uh, so I can give it a name here and instead of this is Amazing Grace, I can say that was Amazing Grace. Uh, and I save that, um, but I still haven't stored it on my Juno. Uh, although the Juno right now, it has a little asterisk up there uh, because I've changed it. So if I want to save this to the Juno, now I'd press the right button. It'll pop up a list. Um, but if I save it now, it's still going to say this is Amazing Grace. So I'm going to cancel that. And I come right here, and if I click this little arrow, I can change the name of the perform. You only get so many characters that will show up on the keyboard. So if I typed that was Amazing Grace and I hit enter, you can see I'm not going to get very many of them. So uh, you might want to select uh, or just title this in such a way that you'll see all the things that you want. Anyway, so now I can choose somewhere and write that to the Juno. Uh, but I'm not going to because I don't like the change that I made. So that's it for this video, uh, Introduction to Editor. I've got some other videos coming up that'll explain some more advanced features and we'll take apart a couple of custom performs and we can see what's going on in them. And as you can hear, uh, upcoming videos will have vastly improved audio from my mic. In the meantime, check us out at ctimusic.org for more information about our ministry. And if you would like to consider joining one of our teams, check out join.ctimusic.org.